more leaves. Woke up this morning, my yard stomach. We on, Kevin? Should be. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Ashley. So, uh, very special day today. Um, we're just we're excited to have everybody with us this morning. Um, just a way of an announcement. Um, please pray for Alpine Baptist Church uh, here in Gaylord, uh, our other Southern Baptist Church there. Uh, they are going to be closing their doors, and I think this is their last Sunday, so or last weekend was or whatever. But we are meeting with them next next Sunday. Do you know where Townline Road is? 
that church right there on the corner? Okay. Well, we drive by that. Yes, that is correct. So we were, yeah, so myself, Neil, Kevin, uh, association leaders will be meeting with them uh, next Sunday. And uh, so we're going to see what's going on and what options are available. So could you just, I want you to make that a matter of prayer, please. It's a very hard, it's a hard thing for us to be part of, honestly. And uh, so we don't know what's going on, why, anything. So uh, just continue to pray for them. Uh, I know we got a couple of people that are still out not feeling well. Um, and uh, we've got some of our travel downstate. So Nathan and Linda, they're down in Grand Rapids with their family this weekend. So continue to pray for them. Miss Mary has her surgery next week. So continue to pray for her on a Friday. So the second, I believe it is Friday the second. So um, pray for her and uh, we'll, we'll continue that and see how, whatever support you need when you get back. So, should be up and running. Should be out running a, running a 5K again before it's over with. So, yeah. I just remember that at the end of this, this morning service, we'll have our uh, short annual business meeting. So, I'll just make note of that as well. So, any other updates that I'm not aware of? Brother Don? I have a test on the 14th. Okay. Um, because of my faults on the website. Yeah. yeah. Chrissy goes on the 4th, the following week for her checkups and stuff. She has to go get another. Another COVID test before she goes to the goes in for their appointments and whatnot. So get you get your COVID test tomorrow. Very good. Where do you get it at? Your doctor's office? No, here in Davis. At the health center? At the, the health care across from the health center. Okay. All right, very good. All right. Any other prayer updates? Cutie pie. She's doing good. Love it. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We love you so much. We thank you for the words that you've given to us today to speak and to be part of, and we pray for uh, our church families, those that aren't able to be here today, those that are traveling and, and that are working, and we thank you for them. Send your spirit to touch them, and Father, we will praise you and give you all the glory and honor you're doing. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Brother Don, come lead us in some worship this morning. this old man gets any words mixed up, you just follow along with me. <laughs> but I feel very fortunate. I stopped the other morning at Burger King, and they always put way too much breading on them, two for four, you know. So I feed it the seagulls, and one comes soaring in there. He only had one leg. So I chased the rest of them away so I could feed him. <laughs> okay. Amazing Grace, 3.30. I 
that amazing grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found Was blind, but now I Praise the Lord. I just wish Jody was here. <laughs> okay, because he lives, 407. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know yes I know who holds the fear And word is lit, the living just because he lived. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings. But greater still. That calm assurance This child will face uncertain days Because he lives Because he lives I can face Because I know, yes I know, who holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives, and then one day I'll cross that river, I'll fight life's fight. glory and I'll know that he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow yes I can because he lives all fear is gone because I know yes I know who holds the future And life is worth the living Just because he lives Oh, number 426, Victory in Jesus. Yes, sir. I heard an old how his Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning 
Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love. Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard a mansion. He is built for me no. and you will go free. And I heard a pound. My Savior forever, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. is built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory my Savior forever. He taught me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing I think we all want this, just a closer walk with thee. If I can get this, get this old Capodastro fixed up here, there we go. I Thou art strong, Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. So Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and snares, if I fall Grant it, Jesus, 
is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. My feeble life is o'er. Time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely home to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Granted, Jesus is my plea. That's my only plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, just a closer walk with thee, just a closer walk, just a closer walk, granted Jesus is my plea, that's my only plea. Daily walking close to thee, be dear Lord, let it be. I guess if I have to do this again, I'll have to get some um, super glue and put it on my thumb, because this this pick keeps sliding in all different directions. <laughs> We'll greet somebody this morning, give them a hand bump or a figure, hello, air, air whatever. I wonder if this pick is any better. I'd like to sing you this morning one of the hymns that I wrote after these gentlemen say their prayer and he was talking about you. <laughs> Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We just thank you for those who are gathered here today, Lord. And we, we are mindful of those who could not be here for, for sundry and various reasons. Uh, some are traveling, some are not feeling well. Father, we ask that you would just encompass them with your loving arms and let them know that uh, uh, we love them and care for them as, as you do. Father, we just ask that you would uh, bless this offering this morning, magnify and glorify it, Lord, to your uh, precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. They took my blessed Savior and they nailed him to a cross. Each day I try to realize my gain was his loss. But much to their surprise when they rolled that stone away, he was far up in the heavens by his father there to stay unending love is what he gives to me unending love so merciful and free 
And each day I try to thank him through the stars above for his grace and goodness and his unending love. Someday a mighty trumpet will sound And time will be no more I'll meet my blessed Savior Upon that golden shore He'll step down from his glorious throne And take me by the hand and we'll walk and talk forever in that promised land, unending love is what he gives to me, unending love, so merciful and free. And each day I try to thank him through the stars above for his grace and goodness and his unending love for his grace and goodness and his unending love Unending love. Yes. And that's exactly what it is. Now, when did you write that song, Don? Oh, my goodness. Six months ago, probably. Okay. All right. Beautiful. All right. Let me get this moved over here. Stand by. Where my day's going? Just leave it, Ben. I ruined everything. Don't no, you didn't. There you go. <laughs> oh. This is Monday. This is Monday. Exactly. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody had a decent week. Am I on? I'm on, right? Oh, I'm. Yeah. I don't know. Looks like I'm on. Yep. Okay, very good. All right. So, open your Bibles, not to the calendar. Wow, it's one of those days. Luke chapter 12. All right, so I wanted to do something a little different today. Um, we've been going through the book of Acts. And as we've been going through there, we've seen that through the book of Acts and when Paul's walking, um, that things begin to get uh, somewhat complicated, don't they? They get a uh, sort of a controversy happens, doesn't it? Uh, there's always either one or two things happening as a riot or a revival. And I wanted to, to talk a bit about that because I had somebody ask me that question about, you know, you're, you're talking about this division in the church. And is that still today? And I said, yeah, it actually happens. But what is it that causes division? Why are people divided amongst the church? Why should churches, why do churches act this way? And I really think if you walked in the walk with the Lord, you know, quite a bit, you, you've seen controversy as it happens pertaining to the gospel or the interpretation of scripture. We've seen that happen quite often. And not here at this church, uh, praise the Lord for that, but I think in churches in general in life that you'll see that happening. Being uh, born again, being a disciple of Christ uh, really is, is the ultimate goal. I, I really firmly believe that. And Many of us understand this by looking at our life and what our life used to be like before Christ and what is our life like after Christ now. And as we see through rough places in our life and rough times, we see that the crooked ways of the world become and be made straight because of what the Lord does for us. And 
sometimes we feel good about ourselves and we want to share the gospel and the good news with the people that you come in contact with. However, we feel good because it's something that's been done to us, right? But we don't always expect that from somebody else. Or we, we do expect it, but we don't always get that from somebody else. And we have something that's everlasting. We have something that, that the world can't take away from us. The world can't comprehend. We have something that is, that is near death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, or things present, or things to come, can take away from us. And that's exciting good news. We have something that makes us laugh when we want to cry. It makes us get up when we want to stay down. It, it makes us run when we're tired, and it makes us strong when we're weak. We have something that makes us believe in the impossible. Do you see this? You see where I'm going with this? This, this is something that lives inside of us, but not everybody has that. We have something, something in us that keeps us together when the raging storms of life blow our way and something that for the disciple, a true personal relationship with Christ makes all the difference. For you see, the disciple is much more than just an admirer of Christ. I want you to see that. The disciple not only sings songs about Jesus, in beautiful songs. But the disciple not only worships Jesus, not only says nice things about Jesus, isn't just able to quote scripture and pray on command. The disciple is a true follower of Christ. He discerns the things to put into practice and the teachings. The disciple not only practices our faith, but also lives our faith and, and others see it in us. And once you become a true disciple of Jesus, your life will truly change. I can honestly tell you that. The certain things will set you off. It just angers you, and it's, it's righteous indignation. And to other people, you don't, they don't understand. So, well, wait a minute. This didn't, some other things didn't bother you, but this one does. Yes, this, bought, this, is, this is wrong. This should not be so. And then people will start to treat you differently. I can tell you that. People act differently towards you. You'll feel different. Perhaps you used to go certain places and those places you don't go anymore. People you used to hang out with, and well, you just can't hang out with them anymore. People used to be those, what you thought were friends, they're not truly your friends anymore. Things you used to say you couldn't say anymore. And I can honestly tell you, just in living in my own personal life, that I catch myself in certain phrases that I used to say I can't say no more. And I get around people that are not of, or that are of the world and they're very worldly, and, and I catch myself headed in that direction. No, no, you can't. And I have to repent and turn away and walk away from it. Repent for my sins. And that's the difference, I think, between a true disciple of Christ. As you walk in the division that's within us, there's a division that is separating us from the world. And even when we make a mistake, we have to walk away and say, you know what, no, 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 I can't do that. I have messed up, and I have to go be with the Lord. And people don't understand that. The things you used to do, the things you can't do, because you've been bitten by the Jesus but Luke chapter 12 is what we're going to look at this morning. But Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 10, quote, You'll be hated amongst the people for my name's sake. In other words, when you're truly going to be following Christ, doing something for the kingdom, get ready. Get ready for the opposition. And that's where Paul was at in the book of Acts. And that's why I want to take this a real quick day today and talk about that. This is not unnormal. This is the norm, if you will. The first whole 12 chapters of Luke is about discipleship. Jesus is teaching the masses about what it really means to be a disciple. And here he's warning his disciples what's going to happen to them when they start serving Jesus. So Matthew, or Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 49. I came to cast what on the earth? Fire on the earth. And 
would it that be already kindled? I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather what? Division. Division, my friends. This is what God has come to bring. For now, in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. It will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, Mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say, oh, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why don't you know how to interpret the present time? And why do you not judge for yourself what is right? As you go with the accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on his way, lest he drag you into judgment. And I judge, and the judge hands you over to the officer, and the officer puts you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you've paid the very last penny. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word and how it blesses us and how it encourages us to to realize that when we walk in the fire, it's because you have allowed it to take place. It's difficult. There is division. It's going to happen. So comfort us as we walk through that. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, friends, he is truly warning his disciples of what happens when they go out and start serving him. He starts off in verses 1 through 3 there about the hypocrisy that has blinded them in their past. Verses 4 through 11, the true disciple isn't worried about what people may do to them. Because even if they kill us, guess what? What's the worst that happens? We go and see Jesus. We're with him. He goes on to tell the disciples in 22 to 34, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to wear, for your Father in heaven will take care of you. He's saying, listen, don't worry about that, but what do we like to do? We like to sit and worry and fret, don't we? We worry and worry, and he's saying, listen, aren't you better than the birds of the air? For they neither sow nor do they reap, but your heavenly Father takes care of them. Cast your cares upon me. Why do you worry about these certain things? And he warns his disciples through 35 through 48 there, be on the lookout for the Lord's return. Be ready for the day of the Lord. Be on guard because you don't know when it's going to happen. You better keep watching and serving the Lord until the day he comes. For you see, everybody won't be happy on that day of the Lord. <laughs> I can guarantee that day. I always said I wanted a little hang time as I'm going up when the rapture comes. When the Lord comes, he says he's going to come in the twinkling of an eye. In the blinking of an eye, two will be working and one will be left and one will be taken. Like a thief in the night. And I want a little hang time as I'm leaving. Saying, I told you so. As I'm going, I'm going up to heaven. I want to be saying, saying, I wish you could coming with me. His desire is that none should perish but all should have everlasting life. But what do we sit and fret and worry about? What's happening right here, right now, in the very present, don't we? We wring our hands and worry because we got people upset with us. Or bad at us. And I'm just as guilty, friends. I'm preaching this to myself. I don't like controversy. I hate controversy. It makes me sick. Anybody else get a witness, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's awful, isn't it? But Jesus says, it's going to come. There's going to be division in your life. It's going to happen. And the division was within. Let's talk about that for just a quick second before we move forward. Is it the division within ourselves of the things that we want to do? in our own selfish human life versus what God is having us to do or telling us to do to honor Him. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's God is saying, listen, friends, I have a plan. Your plan is not my plan. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. You can't punch them in the nose and flatten their nose all over their face. It, you just can't do that. Lord, I want to. No, you can't. And this is struggle and the division within. <laughs> Amen? You know, you can't run them off the road. No, you can't go do that. Don't go pull them over the side of the road and give them a piece of your mind. Some of us don't have enough to give away. <coughs> okay? Right? Yeah. 
But the good news is, as we look at this in our text this morning, Jesus drops a bomb on them and tells them, I have not come to bring peace, but strife and division on earth. Why the confusion? Why the tension? Well, the first thing is this. Fire strengthens and prepares us for the work of the kingdom. Fire strengthens us and prepares us for the work of the kingdom. And I use the word fire because it's the fire that divides. Why all the mess? Well, first of all, Jesus doesn't, first of all, Jesus doesn't bring peace. He does bring peace, but not a false peace. He doesn't bring that peace that what we are, what in our human minds think. He says, I brought a peace that what? Surpasses all understanding, okay? So why is it that Jesus brings fire? Well, verse 49 says it. I have come to bring fire on the earth. This is the refining fire that Jesus is talking about. You see, when you get hooked on Jesus, <laughs> all the stuff that held you back in the past, the refining fire just gets rid of it and purifies it. You know, that's what they do when they, when they take precious metals, gold and silver, and they take the fire and the heat, and they, they put it in there, uh, put it up against it, and it takes all the impurities and brings them to the top. Um, Robert McDonald wrote a book, Dr. Robert McDonald, excuse me, apologize for that, and it's called The Refiner's Fire. And he talks about the fire that you're going through right now is for your perfection i don't like that <laughs> there's a reason why god brings the fire or allows the fire of division because he's like you got something in your life that's not pure that needs to be removed and that pure that impurity always comes to the top and then they the the refiner takes that all that gold and precious metal and they slough it off it's called slag it's worthless it's good for nothing there's not even a little bit of precious metal in it. It's boiled off. And what's left is purity. So as we're walking through this fire, Jesus is telling us, listen, I've come to bring fire on the earth to purify you. All pride and envy and jealousy, that false ego and self-esteem, all that bitterness, all that hatred and selfishness, all that stuff that's been holding you back with a true relationship comes to the top. Sometimes when we go through it, it's not because the Lord is punishing us, but He's strengthening you and me. The Lord encourages us. The Lord is helping us. The Lord is making a way out of no way for us. Mm. The Lord is positioning you for a great work. But man, it's tough getting there, isn't it? I don't like that. The Lord is polishing us for a brighter day. The Lord is getting all the impurities out of you how to believe in him more and more how to be more receptive to his voice oh that's terrible i know sometimes that we feel as if the lord has left us in the fire a little too long some of us are a little overbaked, if you will <laughs> we're a little crispy it's better than being half baked exactly we want to say lord i believe i'm done <laughs> can i get out now and the lord says no just a little longer. We kind of do that with the microwave, don't we? Don't we? We put the microwave on for a minute and 30 seconds, but in minute 10, minute 15, we, start to, we turn it off and open the door. Because we know better when, we, when we're making popcorn. We, we don't know if that timer, the timer's not right. It, we got to hear, hear that, that popping, the last little, every three seconds or something, a pop or something, like that, and we, we open the door. Oh, that's good enough. And there's a whole bunch of unpopped kernels down at the bottom. We didn't let it get cooked enough. But there's a fine line when you cook it too much, right? And it, oh, anybody like burnt popcorn? Joy does. <laughs> I know, I knew there was one person. I knew there was one. Say, okay, Lord, I, I, I know you come with fire, but why, why all the strife? Why all the division? Because now you're a new creation, he says. The old has passed away and everything's become new. You have a new walk. You have a new talk. You have a newness towards life. And remember when we were walking through the book of Acts and we were talking about Paul, what happened with Paul at the, at the synagogue in the whole city? What happened? There was a division. I mean, you've got Jews and Gentiles, but then you've got Jews that were 
believing in Jesus and over here with the Gentiles. And you've got all this division taking place. Lord, I, it's, it's terrible to me. For you see, friends, even people in your household will turn against you. That's what he's saying in our passage in Luke 14. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, mom and dad, everybody against one another. Every earthly relationship from now on will be measured by the truth that you carry in your life. For you see, even people that you thought that you have a personal love relationship with can cause division. So don't think it a strange thing. I, I said this before, but with kids, I see kids go to homes and they, they, they come to camp or something, they get saved, they go home, they go right back into the middle, middle of what's taking place, and there's no unity. There's nothing that's, con no continuity, I should say. Because... The division is Jesus. It's not the individuals. It's about Jesus. So stop taking things personally. We need to keep on praying. We need to keep on singing. Singing. Keep on praising the Lord. Keep our heads held high. Keep on serving the Lord because I came to tell somebody that there is a breakthrough in the selfishness and the things of your life that's happening right now that you may be listening to me. Hear me carefully. There is a brighter day coming. Not only is the good news of the fire, not only does it strengthen and prepare us for the work, but it also helps us to see the fire helps us to see. Now, if I was to take this whole room and completely black it out, where there's no light at all, nothing, zero, none, and I would have a match, and I would light a match, that would be the only fire, that would be the only light that you could see. The, the measurement of, of light is not, it's not the measurement of light, it's the absence of darkness. It's the absence of darkness. And you're measuring that light against that. It helps us to see when we, what we didn't see at first. It helps us to see what was there all along. But sometimes, like it was with Stephen, as he was being stoned, and Saul, who becomes Paul, was standing there approving of this as we walk through that in the book of Acts. We needed to be in the stoning pit of life before he was able to open his eyes and see what? The Lord sitting at the right hand of the Father. You see what's happening there? Stephen never saw that before until he was being stoned and in the worst part, the worst days of his life, that he was being beaten and stoned to death. And then the glory of heaven was opened up to him. Don't drink it a strange thing when people talk against you. You pray for those who use you bless those who spitefully use you pray for those who speak bad against you sorry i got that backwards it helps us to see what we've been blinded by when you're a disciple you start to truly see it for the first time you see the division within as it helps and not being a hindrance you you, you see you start to see a division within as a blessing instead of a curse as a positive instead of a negative you start to see division as a sign to carry instead of giving up it's something to work through the question for today what is god calling you to do in the midst of the fire of your life right now what is the fire that's taking place in your life that is causing either you to see or is causing you to be refined, or as Paul in our passage that we read last week, as he goes into these cities, these last three cities, there causes a great division amongst the people themselves because of the gospel. What is God refining you for right now, friends? What direction? As a disciple of Christ, we must discern what God is calling us to do. Are you being torn from the left and the right of what God wants you to do. No, Lord, I, I don't want to do this, but I have to do this. I, I want to do this, but I can't do this. As Paul said in Romans 7, you're torn or twexed between the two. Is that you today? Can I tell you there's a breakthrough coming? 
You keep praying. You keep walking through what God is calling you to do. And I can guarantee you, by the sound of my voice, freedom is coming. You allow the fire to divide. You allow the fire to revine. You allow the fire to purify you because a new day is coming. Hallelujah. Don't think you're not in the middle of a fire for for no reason. There's a reason for it, friends. It's your job to look at the fire. It's your job to embrace the fire. It's your job to look and say, God, where are you headed with me? What am I doing? Why? It's not you that you need to be finding it. It's you need to be asking God to do this. Family members will leave you. Hear me. Church members may not agree with you, but the folks on the job don't care about you. People may abuse you. Then so in the end, Jesus is trying to tell you, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am the Lord thy God. Follow me. Follow me. You might want to run away from all your problems. You might want to run away from all the strife. You may want to run away from all the division. But hear what God is saying. Hang in there. I hear God saying it all the time. Don't give up the fight. I hear God saying, Eyes have not seen, nor ear has not heard, nor entered the hearts of the people what good things that the Lord has prepared for us to do. I hear God saying, you hang in there, friends. There's a blessing and a waiting for you. If you hang in there, there's a better day for you. If you hang in there, you won't be disappointed. If you hang in there, you'll be able to interpret the signs of the times of what's happening right now. Can I tell you that Jesus hung in there? No pun intended. Not talking about hanging on the cross. <laughs> no. Jesus hung in there through the midst of all those troubles and the strife. He knew that the day was coming and he finally said, for my hour is now at hand. He didn't give up. We don't give up. Since he's, his lives, since he lives and he lives in us, we can also choose to live and not give up. He's got us way too close he says he's got the whole world in our hands doesn't he in his hands hang in there endure division and strife because if you hang in there there is a blessing that's coming i can guarantee you that by the promise of god's word people will be divided because of the fire that god brought It's not brought to bring peace so don't think we live in a rainbow world with unicorns running around and all balloons and roses It's not. It's terrible strife. The strife has never stopped. Our world is in division now. Our whole world is upside down. But friends, hear me carefully. There's a brighter day coming. Hang in there. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't give up. If you make a mistake, fess up, take the punishment, move on. It's okay. It's going to happen. You repent and turn to the Lord. That's what the refining fire is for, make you pure. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this word and your love that you have for us. I pray now that there be someone by the sound of my voice that has been walking in a day of of turmoil and torment and uh, that their their life has just been, they thought that the fire of all the, the division and all the stuff, the strife that's been happening in their life has been Something that they've done, it's not. Lord, you're using it for your glory and your honor that this is causing them to refine, to become the refiner's fire and that your name would be glorified. Father, we love you. Oh, we thank you so very much for this. In this word that is your word. Father, we enter in this time of invitation. It's your time. It's holy time. Would you move on our hearts? We love you. It's in Jesus' name. Would you stand up with us, close, short, for a, uh, uh, did I not put that up there? Oh, man. Yep, I didn't put it up there. I had an invitation song I was going to do. Don, do you know uh, there's something about that name? Do you know that, or do you have a song you can sing of shorthand of invitation? Yep. Yep. You do that? No, it's not. Just sing a song. Just sing a song. Just sing a song. Okay, Joy, help me out. Would you stand up with us this morning? morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away, fly away.
Yes, I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away, fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. Uh, a few announcements this morning, uh, Wednesday prayer and Bible study, and Saturday, October 31st, we will have the trunk or treat here, so uh, we will have that. Any updates? We're going to go into our annual meeting here in just a moment, so I can give you a chance to go to the bathroom, get a cup of coffee, whatever, but any other updates, prayer requests that I don't know about? Anybody? 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 No? Yes? No? All right. Roger, will you dismiss us in a quick word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father,